All right, so as a last part of the instruction regarding uh, kinematics in two dimensions, we're going to be discussing reference frames and relative velocities. So here I have drawn two reference frames labeled A and B with a point P. And we want to figure out how to uh, basically specify this point P relative to A. And if you remember, we normally specify points in uh, two space using a vector going from the origin to the point. So it's very easy to show that this is, you know, the vector going from P to B. However, going from A to P, or showing the vector going from A to P is hard if A has some relative velocity relative to P and B. So, and if uh, P also has some sort of other relative velocity vector. So what we do, here we can draw that vector going from uh, A to P, but it's hard to uh, calculate this vector without an intermediate step. And the way we do that is by uh, calculating the vector that connects these two reference frames. So you have, you know, uh, in order to find this vector from reference frame A to the point, basically where is P in this reference frame, we have to add uh, its position within its own reference frame that's currently in this uh, vector right here, as well as where A is relative to V in terms of a reference frame. So you have to compare the positions of uh, the reference frames themselves as well as where P is in one of the reference frames. And then from here, uh, to account for the mo moving of the velocities, we know that uh, vector addition, you can derive it just as you do with uh, scalar addition. So when we derive both sides, we get you know V of A relative to P. So the motion of P within this reference frame so moving in, uh, in this case, probably that direction relative to the origin at A is its velocity in the uh, reference frame in which it currently rests plus the velocity of the two relative reference frames, in this case, A relative to B. And you may think, what's the point of changing all these reference frames all the time? Well, it comes into play normally when you have some sort of fluid moving around. So for instance, if you had, uh, let's say P was some point on the ground and A was the reference frame of the air. So all the air is stationary relative to this moving reference frame A. And that's because all the air is moving with some velocity this direction. Now, from the air's perspective, it looks as though uh, P is moving this way and the air itself feels as though it's standing still. However, P also has this direction it's moving relative to the ground. So to factor that in and figure out what P's actual movement is relative to uh, the air velocity, which is moving this way relative to B, all you have to do is add the vectors as we've drawn here. And if you didn't want to do this in terms of you know angles relating each of the various vectors, you can instead do it with the components. So if you add up the x and y components of P's motion relative to its initial reference frame in B, as well as the uh, motion in either dimension of the two reference frames of uh, relative to one another, you can get V's reference frame in the other. So moving on now, we're going to do a sample problem with uh, reference frames and relative velocities. So in this case, we have a plane and some wind, just as we do with the hypothetical example we previously discussed. So in this case, the plane moves with velocity vector described here, 200i plus 20j, and the wind moves with a time-dependent velocity vector, you can see the t's in here, uh, 20ti minus 30t squared j. And our objective is to find the plane's displacement after one hour relative to the ground. And so, as we learned before, displacement delta r is simply uh, the integral of your velocity vector with respect to time. And how do we find the plane's total velocity vector for each, uh, basically relative to the ground, taking into account the wind? And what we have to do is just add the components, as we discussed uh, very recently. You remember you add the two VX components, 
and the two vy components to get your overall sort of vx and vy. So now, to get our displacement, we displacement rather, we integrate from uh, time t equals zero to one hour uh, with respect to the vectors 20t plus 200 because you have 20t here and 200 up there i and uh, you have negative 30t squared plus 20j. Now uh, we integrate that and following our standard rules of integration we get you know 10t squared plus 200t i plus negative 10 t cubed plus 20 t j all from 1 to 0 and then just plugging in the 1 for everything we get 10 plus 200 and then negative 10 plus 20 so we get our final vector is 210 i plus 10 j in net displacement. And you can find the total distance covered simply by doing the Pythagorean theorem with uh, 210 down here and 10 over here. So that concludes our coverage of reference frames and relative velocities. In the next video, we're going to be doing uh, more projectile motion practice as well as some circular motion practice just to round out uh, our coverage of kinematics in two dimensions.